Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about exploratory data analysis in Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I am going to explain what exactly exploratory data analysis is and then we will move on to the whole objective of doing EDA on any data set. Moving further, I will discuss all the steps that are involved in the whole process of exploratory data analysis and finally we will perform EDA on a data set from scratch. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And do check out Edureka's data science with Python certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now without any further ado, let us begin our session. So what exactly is exploratory data analysis? Exploratory data analysis or simply put we can call it as EDA as well is nothing but a data exploration technique to understand the various aspects of data. It includes several techniques in a sequence that we have to follow and okay we will learn about those techniques later on in the session but the whole aim or the whole objective is to understand the data and understanding the data can be a lot of things when we are exploring the data. So few things we have to keep in mind while exploring the data like we have to make sure that the data is clean and does not have any redundancies or missing values or even null values in the data set and we have to make sure that we identify the important variables in the data set and remove all the unnecessary noise in the data that may actually hinder the accuracy of our conclusions when we work on model building and we must understand the relationship between the variables through EDA. And last but not the least, we must be able to derive conclusions or gather insights about the data for conclusive interpretation in order to move on to more complex processes in the data processing life cycle. Now, let us try to understand the objective of EDA in data exploration. The very basic idea is to make sure that the data after the EDA is clean. And by clean, I mean the data has to be free of all the redundancies including null values and all those things. So we can narrow it down to two main and basic objectives to perform EDA. So first objective is EDA helps us in identifying the faulty points in data and if you have identified the faulty points then you can easily remove them and clean your data. And the next objective is that EDA helps us to understand the relationship between the variables which gives us a wider perspective on the data and it actually helps us build on it by utilizing the relationship between the variables. So these are the main objectives of performing EDA on any data. Now let us move on and take a look at the steps involved in EDA. So these are the basic steps that are involved. So I'll just uh, highlight the few main points although like each step has several other uh, features as well. So we'll take a look at those while we are working on the demo guys. The very first and the basic step is to understand the variables in the data set. So you have to be pretty sure about what kind of data you're working at. What are the variables like the number of columns and rows and how it actually looks like. So that is your first step after loading the data into your program. Then the next step is to clean the data from the redundancies. Now redundancies can be irregularity in the data. It can be some variables or some columns that are not necessary for making our conclusions or interpretations. So we can just remove them or there are outliers which can cause a noise in the data or you know it may overfit or underfit the model when we are working on the model building as well. So this is the second step guys we have to clean the data in order to move forward and last but not the least we have to analyze the relationship between the variables. So let us move on to the fun part guys. So what I will do now is jump right to Jupyter notebook and we will work on a demo. I'm going to take a data set from Kaggle and perform EDA on it. So let's take it up to Jupyter Notebook guys. So I have already opened this notebook guys and if you don't already know how to work at Jupyter Notebook we have a full tutorial on uh, how to work with Jupyter Notebook. You can find it on our YouTube page guys and uh, if you're still looking for uh, shortcuts like if you want to just understand how it really works we have a cheat sheet as well which you can refer for working at Jupyter Notebook. And if you're looking at installation and everything we have an anaconda tutorial as well. So the very first thing you have to do is import certain libraries that you're going to need. So I'm going to import pandas with an alias pd. I'm going to import a few other libraries that you may need. I'm going to import seaborn for visual representation guys because we are going to be visualizing the relationship between the variables. So for that I'm going to use seaborn. So I'll run this program and this cell is successfully running right now. It is going to take a while guys. 
So meanwhile, I just want to tell you like how we are going to approach this. Okay, we have done that. So I'm just going to so I'm going to take this variable data and I'm going to use pandas library. So first of all, the very first step is I have to import my data set guys. So this is the location of my data sets and name of the data set is students.csv okay we have an error guys file not found all right so we have successfully imported our data set into the program so the very first step after you load the uh, data into your program is you have to understand the data by understanding the variables inside your data okay i'll just name it as first so the very first step is understanding the data and i'm going to check the first five rows of my data guys so this is my data the first five rows we have these columns like gender race parental level of education lunch test preparation course math score reading score and last we have writing score so these are the scores that are going to be important in our data set by just looking at it i can tell you like these are these values that will be very important while working on any model or making the assumptions or making any conclusions like gender has to be there because it's decisive it has to be either male or female so it is one categorical value that we are going to need in our data set the race and ethnicity may be dropped it's not necessarily a very important variable in our data set and parental level of education if we'll check for the uh, unique values and we'll decide so that is what we are going to do perform eda on it let's check the tail as well like the last five rows as well so we have all these values we have already taken a look at so one thing you can make sure is it's starting from zero and going until 999 so we can just say that we have a thousand entries in this data set so it's not a very big data set but it's relatively not a very small data set either it's perfect for us because while doing the representation it's going to be quite easy for us now let's check for the shape of the data as well so these are all the steps that you have to follow while working all right so we have checked the shape so we have thousand rows and eight columns guys let's just take a look at few other key points when you use the describe it's only showing the math score the reading score and the writing score because all of the other variables that we have are string objects only the integer objects are showing over here so we have a count here like thousand and we have a mean value we have the standard deviation the minimum value 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent and the maximum value as well so as you can see for all those values 100 marks is the maximum and the minimum we have math score is 0 reading score is 17 and writing score is 10 so all these values you can just get by a describe method after that you can just check for uh, columns and uh, rows separately as well so for that you just have to write uh, like data dot columns all right it's not callable so we have gender race ethnicity parent level of education lunch test preparation course math score reading score and writing score so we have completed none okay so we'll just check for the n unique values which is nothing but a function which returns a series with a number of distinct observations over requested access so if we set the value of access to be zero then it finds the total number of unique observations over the index axis so let's just check for the unique values so guys what we'll do now we'll check for the unique values in our data guys so i'll just use n unique and i've already told you what it does so for all these columns it's showing us the unique values so for gender we have two unique values which is basically male and female for race and ethnicity we have five values parental level of education we have six values for lunch we have two values for test preparation course we have two values for math score reading score and writing score we have quite a few unique values from out of 0 to 100 we have scores of 77 unique values for writing score for reading score we have all those things and if you want to check separately for any column you can just write let's say gender and we can just write unique and it will show us the unique values inside that column guys so which is male and female 
similarly if you want to check let's say for race and ethnicity we can check so we have group b group c group a group d and group a for parental level of education also we can check all right so we have bachelor's degree some college we have master's degree associates degree high school and some high school so these are all the values that you can just make out looking at the data guys so by looking at these unique values i can tell you we have categorical values like we have test preparation course lunch and agenda which can be converted into the dummy values out of all these values i'm just going to take these three that is a match score reading score and writing score and lunch test preparation and gender and the other ones like ethnicity and parental level of education can be dropped because that are not necessarily very important variables inside our data set now we'll move on to the next part of our eda which is basically nothing but cleaning the data guys so the very first thing that would come into your mind is check for the null values inside any of these for that we can just check for the null values and get a sum also so inside this data set we have zero null values so we don't have to worry about dropping any column just because there is no value or replacing it with some other values but in some cases in some data sets which are relatively very large like if you have 7000 or 8000 values and if you have even 2% null values or missing values inside those data set you have to be pretty sure about either if you want to leave those values untouched or if you want to just drop them or replace any values from them so since we don't have any null values inside this we'll move on to the next part which is dropping the redundant data which is not necessarily going to affect our uh, performance of our table guys so now what we'll do is we'll remove a few columns that we don't actually need inside our data set so we'll remove race and ethnicity and parental level of education so these are two values that i don't need in my data set because i think these are not important values for any valuation so i'll just remove these so i'll take one variable let's say student is equal to data dot drop and I'm gonna provide the race, ethnicity, the column name, right? And we don't want parental level of education, and it has to be access is equal to one, otherwise, it will throw us an error, right? So when I look at student so we have all these values we have gender lunch test preparation course math score reading score and writing score next step would be like checking for outliers which is not necessarily going to be a problem with us because we have a pretty clean data set so you can go for outliers as well if you want to know more about outliers i will tell you what outliers actually are so outliers are nothing but uh, in statistics an outlier is a data point that differs significantly from other observations. Let's say if you have a match score which is 72, you know, 69, and suddenly somebody has a 0 and 1, so that is going to be an outlier. And an outlier may be due to the variability in the measurement or it may indicate experimental error as well. So the latter are sometimes excluded from the data set because an outlier can actually cause serious problems in statistical analysis so that's why we have to look for outliers and uh, in this data set not necessarily we have any outliers so we're going to leave that and move on to the third step that we have which is basically nothing but the analysis of the or we can call it as relationship analysis so i'll just mark it as three okay i'll just write as relationship analysis now what we'll do is we'll take a look at a few other measures so first of all we have correlation matrix and uh, before we move on to relationship analysis i hope everything is clear to you guys like we started from uh, loading the data and then we talked about how we can explore the data look at different points in the values and then we check for any missing values while cleaning the data you have to check for null values you have to check for redundancies outliers and remove all the unnecessary redundant variables that we have so we have done all that now we are moving on to the next step which is also the final step basically nothing but relationship analysis all right 
so first step i would like to do is correlation matrix because it gives us a wider perspective on what exactly are we dealing with here and a correlation matrix is a table showing correlation coefficients between variables and each cell in the table shows the correlation between two variables and correlation matrix is used to summarize data as an input into a more advanced analysis and also as a diagnostic for advanced analysis so we'll do that guys so we'll start with the relationship between the variables by looking at the correlation matrix for that i'm going to take one variable let's say correlation and i'm going to use my data that is student and i will take the coefficient right so we have no errors guys now i'm going to put it inside a heat map guys using the sns library that i have or seaborn library sns is basically the alias that i'm using for importing the library so i'm going to use the heat map to actually show you what it looks like and so we have x tick labels is equal to correlation columns and then we have y tick labels is equal to columns and then we'll have one more value annotation is equal to what's it true right we have an error guys so basically i forgot to add one comma over here it should work fine now and we have one more error correlation so this is our heat map guys so we have math score reading score and writing score and we can take a look at this uh, heat map but uh, since we do not have a lot of integer values we have a few categorical values as well so it is not necessarily that defining for our uh, data set but if we change these to dummy values we'll be able to get a specific value for this so for writing score and uh, let's say for math score there is a variability of 0.8 and then we have a correlation almost everything is same here so we'll not rely on this we'll move on to the next step for our data set guys so we're gonna uh, plot a few other plots so there is one pair plot we can actually plot guys so i'll just plot it and then tell you what it is so pair plot on the other hand is uh, when you only want to visualize the relationship between two variables where the variables can be continuous categorical or booleans as well and pay plot is usually a grid of plots for each variable in your data set as you can see we have a writing score math score and uh, all these scores so these are quite descriptive when you look at it so all are in the increasing form guys this is also not quite decisive when we are taking a look at a conclusion guys so we'll move on to the next approach that we have which is a scatter plot so a scatter plot is a type of data display that shows the relationship between two numerical variables each member of data set gets plotted as a point whose left parenthesis and right parenthesis coordinates relate to its values for the two variables okay so i'm going to use the relation plot all right x has to be let's say math score we'll take y as a reading score we'll take the hue as gender data is equal to student all right so we have a scatter plot here and we have added the hue as well so as you can see guys for all these values that are in blue dots are actually the gender who are female and the other one is the male counterparts and they are we are having a relationship between their math score and reading score so for all the relative values or the categorical values that we have inside our data set which are basically nothing but test preparation course as well and we have a lunch which has two values so we can change the hue and check for the relationship otherwise so instead of this i can write lunch so for people who had reduced and free lunch the scores are not actually looking good for the standard lunch people the scores are pretty good guys reading score is also quite high and the math score is pretty good as well 
this can be used to minimize our analysis guys because we are basically plotting three different values inside the same graph so we have the score of two different uh, values that is a reading score and a math score and then we have the hue as well which is basically nothing but telling us the different values inside the lunch table guys and then similarly we can have for test preparation course as well so this is the scatter plot guys which we can use to analyze our data and then we'll move on to the next plots that we have which is basically nothing but a histogram so a histogram is a graphical display of data using bars of different heights and in a histogram each bar groups numbers into ranges so the taller bars show that more data range actually falls in that and a histogram basically displays the shape and the spread and continuous sample data so now what we'll do is we'll take a look at a few histograms guys so for that i'm going to use the sns dot dist plot it's going to give us distribution of let's say first of all we check for match score all right so we have the distribution over here starting from zero most of the values are lying between 60 to 80 so we'll take a guess as the highest is basically highest number of people are getting uh, the values around you know 60 to 70 so we'll check for other values as well let's say we'll check for reading score so as you can see we have that distribution again and we'll check for writing score as well all right so all these values we can check with the histogram guys and we can add bins as well so we'll take the bins is equal to let's say 20 or we'll take the bins to be 5 so now you can clearly see the distribution because we have only five divisions over here the most values are between the 60 to 80 uh, column so that is how you can use the histogram to analyze the relationship between or the relationship in your data set right so there's one more plot that i want to talk about which is nothing but all right we'll just take the relation plot again or we'll just take the categorical plot and inside this let's say x is equal to let's say gender we want the kind to be box and uh, data is equal to student right box is not defined cannot perform reduce with flexible type all right so we'll change the values case so we'll take the match score all right so we have our box plot guys so for the match score again we are getting the same values around 60 to 80 so most of the values are falling around that so that is how you can check the relationship for reading score again you can check those values similarly for writing score as well all right so for this analysis uh, my suggestion would be the scatter plot guys that is quite easy to understand because all these values that are the averages we can check with the describe method that we have done in the beginning or we can just go for this one as well to understand the relationship between different variables over here which is match score writing score and all those things but in reality we actually want the relationship between the gender and the match score let's say we want to check the lunch and the match score and the test preparation course and match score for that you are going to use the scatter plot that will just give you all the values that you actually need so this is how you do eda on any uh, data guys so this is a relatively very small data which we had only eight columns and thousand values we started with importing the data into our program then we check for the first five rows then we check for the last five rows what exactly was there then we uh, describe the data in which we had the count the mean the standard deviation minimum values and the maximum values i as well for all the integer values so you have to make sure that all these values inside your table either should be in integer values only then you're going to get the describe uh, function to its maximum capacity otherwise you would be missing a lot of values inside your table and then of course we check for the shape and column names which you can also take a look at when we are uh, looking at the first five or last five rows but the thing is it uh, has only eight columns and sometimes a few data sets like if you're uh, working on stock prediction there are at least 80 19 or maybe 200 columns that has entries in that data set so that is one thing you have to uh, make sure that you are able to check the shape so that you'll be able to get it like how many rows and how many columns that you actually have 
and then you can check for column separately for all these values that we already have over here and then you can check for unique values for which we have for gender we had two for all the values that had two it could be made into categorical values let's say we can say like lunch if you had lunch or not so that is going to be a one categorical value either zero or one which can be categorized as say yes or no so we'll be able to convert it into integer values for computations and similarly for gender if it's a male or a female we can change it to zero and one as well and for race and ethnicity we had five and six values for parental level of education that was quite a challenge so we had to remove these redundancies uh, later on in the session while cleaning the data and for all these math score reading score and writing score are pretty uh, important in our data set so we had to keep those and then uh, we actually checked for unique values of different uh, tables so that we can make out what exactly is necessary for our table or not then came the second part in which we cleaned the data so we checked for the null value since we had no null values inside this uh, data set that we have we had no problems into changing these values so if you had any null values let's say you could have replaced them with drop any so that should have just dropped the whole row from that table and uh, after that you could have replaced the values from some other values so let's say uh, if let's say we had a few null values inside the math score so what we would do is we would take the average or you know the mean value which is 66 and put this value inside all those null values so it wouldn't make a lot of difference because the mean is already 66. So that is one thing that we can do while we encounter the null values inside our data. And then basically we dropped two columns that we thought are redundant to our data into analyzing any uh, reference. But we could have used these for visual uh, analysis. I mean understanding the relationship for we can use parental level of education to determine how much marks a person is actually getting. So that is one thing we can use. So race and ethnicity does not really give any importance in our data guys. It does not really manipulate anything in our data. It is just a column that we can actually drop. So we did that. After that we took to relationship analysis for that we took a look at a correlation matrix and for that we had to calculate the correlation of the student data and then we put it inside a heat map to check for the values. So we had not very conclusive analysis over here. So we moved to the next one which is a pay plot. So pair plot also did the same thing guys. So we had all these relationship between all these uh, pair points that we had which is writing score math score and a reading score and then the most efficient relationship analysis tool that we had found for our data is the scatter plot guys. So we'll be able to make a few assumptions based on these and uh, this is quite important for us in this data of course and then we took a look at a uh, histogram to understand the distributions in our data guys and then we had used the box plot for doing the same and after this we can conclude a few things that we had looked into our data guys so for each step that we have performed over here we can conclude one thing or the other and the next step after this is model building guys so for that you have to change a few things for your model as well but that does not come under the eda guys so let's say if you wanted to calculate or predict the gender of the person getting so and so marks in so and so column then you would have to change a few values like all these string values has to go and it should be converted into integer values or the dummy values like 0 1 and all those things and if you are looking to, for predictive analysis we are going to make a tutorial on stock prediction program guys so hang in there and now that we are done with this session guys i hope you are clear with what exactly is eda how we do it and what is the objective of doing eda on our data don't forget to subscribe to adireka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And also check out Edureka's data science certification with Python program. The link is given in the description box below. And also take a look at uh, the data science with Python full course. You will find a lot of advantages of learning Python for data science. Stay tuned for more tutorials with us. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!